So I was asked to speak about some uh, physical uh, string theory background, so, so some of the constructions and other talks in this conference. And I wasn't sure why uh, the <laughs> this is a physical background. I would explain it is, but I don't know why. So let me instead, um, uh, f further complicating uh, factor is that I actually haven't been thinking about these issues for the last five years at least. So, um, but I'll try to review the, you know, in preparing for these lectures, I read some more recent developments in this area, quite interesting ones. Uh, but I'll start with uh, what happened in the um, first decade of the 21st century, and then tomorrow I'm probably going to discuss more recent work. Um, now, um, so the title of the talk is, was Brain and Quantization, but uh, the typo, now it's Quantizations, which is actually a good thing because uh, you know, physicists mean different things by quantization. Uh, so maybe I should uh, begin by explaining what, what different versions that appear in the physics literature um, and, well, math literature. Of course, there's a... Types of quantization. So first of all, there's a geometric quantization. Oh, sorry, there's a deformation quantization. And uh, the starting point is uh, a Poisson manifold. <coughs> so M is a manifold, P is a Poisson structure, there's a Poisson, well, it's a bivector. is finding some integrability condition, some bracket called the sort in Neuenhuis bracket vanishes. Uh, and um, uh, one looks for, uh, uh, so we want uh, an algebra um, called A. Um, <coughs> Or a power series such that uh, it is, uh, is a vector space, is isomorphic to the infinity function of M <coughs> uh, as a vector space. And second, um, if, you have, if you have denote elements of this algebra, Corresponding to some functions f and like o, so f, the, 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 the product satisfies some condition that oops. Uh, so something like that. So so that the commutator is equal to the, given by the uh, rescaled Poisson bracket times what correction of high order in h squared. So, so, so the deformation quantizations uh, um, is known to exist, uh, and in some sense even unique after some very complicated and large group of sort of gauge equivalences, thanks to uh, its theorem of Kantsevich. But in this form, there's a kind of physical uh, setup, because you're dealing with a real manifold, but uh, um, you know, what I'm going to talk about today will involve a complex analytic version of this, where m is a complex manifold, and m is a a holomorphic Poisson bivector, so it's of type two zero. Uh, it's holomorphic. So, um, but there's another version of quantization which is actually older, or at least maybe not older, but more physical in this considered more in the physical literature called geometric quantization. And that's kind of more nebulous notion. So. Your start starting point is uh, a. Sorry. Okay, I'll try to. Uh, so here I have a symplectic manifold. And um, 
What want, uh, uh, so what, what do we want? Well, we want, first of all, a Hilbert space. Uh, and well, since it's a symplectic manifold, so uh, functions on this manifold form a you know a Lie algebra, and we want uh, some for some unidentified Lie subalgebra. Of this Lie algebra, uh, we want some way to map a function to in the subalgebra <laughs> to an operator on the Hilbert space um, in a way which is compatible with the you know uh, obvious uh, well first of all but there is infinity functions with com values and complex numbers and you want the summon to be compatible with the star structure that is a complex conjugate of the function you also apply star to this okay so compatible with star um, and satisfying well, here something like this where this is again a possible well this is a possible bracket with respect to the inverse symplectic form so you want that, uh, and there's no parameter here, typically. Uh, well, in practice, what, what is this Lie subalgebra? Usually, we have some uh, Lie group, um, uh, some finite dimensional Lie group, acting on, on the symplectic manifold, and we, we want to find well, uh, in, in attacks by some say Hamiltonian vector fields, and um, you want uh, this subalgebra consists of this uh, Hamiltonians for those act for that, those actions. So we want to just. There's also Lie groups typically in this business, uh, which acts on M. Um, okay. Now, um, so both of these quantizations, okay, so, so that's traditional, uh, traditional questions. And um, uh, what I'm going to talk about is how these um, uh, kind of quantizations appear in the um, um, context of uh, topological string theory and topological field theory. So the... So that, so, so the first um, um, appearance of this deformation, this kind of well, this kind of deformations was in, in the context of topological string theory, or if you wish, topological sigma models in two dimensions. I want to describe that first, uh, and then I'll also discuss um, how this can be uh, similar deformations, similar correlation appear in the context of higher dimensional field theory. So um, let me review. Um, so, two-dimensional topological field theory. So that must be a familiar topic. So, um, so in two dimensions, um, what would I mean? Um, it would be crucial to consider topological field theory with boundary, well, with brains or open-closed topological field theories. And in this case, uh, so um, so such a an, um, well, this is a Traditional definition due to Atia, where you have just some uh, geometric, you know, so with a two dimensional topological field theory is some sort of functor, monodal, monodal functor from a geometric category uh, whose objects are circles, disjoint union of circles, and uh, uh, whose bordis, uh, morphisms are some bordisms between uh, this uh, one dimensional manifolds. But I want to uh, enhance it a bit uh, to get to this quantization, and what I want to add is. Uh, to allow uh, one-dimensional manifold, which are objects of this category, to have uh, to have uh, boundaries. So my um, so and um, so object. So it's going to be some. So it's going to be defined. Sorry. Oh, okay. So. Let's see. So can I write on this side at all? Or? So the upper half. This is good. Yeah. Okay. So um, since I erased it, erased it, so so in this uh, open closed topological field theory, consider again some uh, geometric category whose objects are disjoint unions, um, or some uh, just one dimensional um, manifolds, compact manifolds with boundaries. There's basically collections of 
circles and intervals. And one other datum which goes, there's a datum which goes into this, namely um, uh, some set, some other category, and we use its object, let's call it say, um, so this guy depends on a choice of some category called B, because it stands for brains, not brains as um, AI, but A A N E S. So, so the objects of this um, category are a label. Well, have a, first of all, we have orientation. So there's always some orientation on all these um, one-dimensional manifolds. Uh, so alpha, beta, and so gamma, delta, they all label uh, the ob objects of this category. And we use them to label endpoints. And uh, it's our geometric uh, category. And then um, morphism going to be the vortices between these guys. You say something like this. So here's an example of boredom, sort of, which is a manifold with corners. And um, well, since this point is labeled by uh, brain alpha, then the whole piece of the boundary is labeled by the same thing. And here you have, say, delta, and so for compatibility. And beta gamma sort of disappear on the side. So, so, um, and so we want to, for every boredom like that, for, for every object of this geometric category, we want to have a vector space. And for every boredom, we want to have a map of vectors. My question is, you have beta and gamma. The fact that you connect it doesn't mean it's oh, sorry, it means it has to be actually the same, yes. Well, yeah. well dual, if you wish. Yeah. Okay. Dual, one is object. Yeah, one is object. It's the same thing. It should be beta. Okay. So um, it should be the same beta. Yeah. So, um, uh, dual, no, they're just the same, the same. So, um, yeah, the whole piece of boundary called color beta. Then. So, um, um, so that such bordisms should be, uh, the, the topological filter maps each um, object of this category, that is each collection, of the, uh, each one-dimensional manifold, so labeled into a vector space, and each bordism to a map of vector spaces, and this compatibility with gluing. Yeah. And this joint sits on the closed arrow? Um, some other vector space, unlabeled one. Okay, uh, in, in, okay so, um, then there are various, of course, the fact that actually you can define such a, a functor, which behaves nicely under gluing, implies that this category is uh, not, not just any category. For example, the fact that there is a, for example, clearly um, a guy like that should map to the um, identity operator from, uh, from uh, vector space H to alpha beta to itself, and therefore, so this guy tells you that uh, these two vector spaces, H to alpha beta and beta alpha, are uh, dual um, to each other. And uh, if you interpret this vector space, H to alpha, pair alpha beta, as a space of morphisms in this category, then you see that morphism from alpha beta and beta alpha are dual to each other. So it's, again, not, not every category satisfies that. So anyway, so. So this kind of what's a topological field theory, which contains brains. And the two primary examples, which uh, play an important role in mirror symmetry, are geometric in nature and obtained by quantizing something classical. So um, what I emphasize is that quantization in that sense is different from what I'm erasing. So, so, so examples of open, closed, D to TFTs, the traditional ones. And, uh, so what does it occupy? So if you have just closed, this would be a commutative for a Benio sphere, right? And yeah. If we open it, is a, what is it kind of for a Benio category? Or well, I mean. What is the algebraic uh, uh, equivalent? Well, um, so. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult to explain it in, 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 with this, if you, oh, it's all you require. Uh, you can, um, well, can so example, uh, for example, in, yes, yeah, yeah. so you can you construct everything from this category B. And, and this category yeah. is A linear, yes, where A yes, is this yeah. yeah? Well, I mean, you can, since this vector space attached to a circle turns out to be a uh, commutative algebra, yeah. uh, and, uh, and it's just. Is linear over the, over the algebra, yes? 
Well, so yeah. So that's basically it turns out to be Hochschild cohomology or homology of this category. Yeah, so, okay, so yeah, B has to basically be our infinity category. Yeah. Of course, you have to upgrade a little bit to allow grading on these vector spaces. Okay. So, but, uh, uh, and, uh, okay. so, but then, yeah, B turns out to be just Calabiao infinity category. So, um, so examples, for example, would be like, so in the case when you can take, uh, say, this category of brains to be, uh, bounded derived category of coherent sheaves on a Calabi Yao manifold. Uh, th th one example. Um, so another example would be um, so it's usually called B model. Really. So here B mean, doesn't mean brain, it just means B. So uh, and if you look, maybe it should be called B, but okay. So another example is you have a Fukai category of a simplectic manifold, complex. Uh, again, X is a Calabi Yau now, but now um, the, 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 this category really depends on its symplectic form. So. so here it only gives its scalar form. So, um, now, in this business, um, we don't encounter any non-commutative algebra, in particular, even though we have, say, well, say, if you look at um, uh, space attached to a circle, so in the case of a B model, you just get, um, uh, this is going to be a something like this. Um, Um, there's nothing, so you get super commutative algebra and you have to get it simply because uh, that's a, you know, axioms of, these axioms ensure that uh, the algebra structure defined on this uh, vector space, such a circle, which corresponds to it, given by this map, so this boardism, is commutative or super commutative, as the case might be, if you have grading. So, um, um, however, on the other hand, if you look at um, just purely formally on this um, uh, category so and ask how you can deform it while staying within uh, the realm of uh, topological field theory so this, uh, then uh, there is indeed a deformation of this um, well actually a number of deformations but one of them corresponds to homomorphic Poisson by vector so in general so again Kansevich showed that you can you can deform this category in the direction of a, a holomorphic uh, well, so you can start with the infinitesimal, you can start with the holomorphic Poisson by vector. But, you know, more generally, you can say that, so, and so any solution of uh, some guy like this, some Mauro Cartan equation, can be uh, sort of, you can be used. to deform um, um, the B model. Uh, and uh, deform, the category. deform the category, right. So now, uh, so the question is, okay, can you understand this from a physical viewpoint? And so, uh, and uh, that's what next I'm gonna explain. Um, So th this was first uh, discussed uh, 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 in my paper from 2003. So, um, so observation is this, that um, um, So the data which go, well, okay, so the data, data which go into construction of this topological field theory as well as this deformed topological field theory can also always be de described in some language which, well, this data look very different at first. So you have a complex manifold with some additional structure. Here you have uh, 
um, symplectic structure, a real symplectic structure here have complex structure for Poisson by vector, but turns out there is some ge differential geometric datum which kind of covers all of them. Uh, and uh, um, so, so uh, B model data, so A model data, it is complex structure in the manifold plus color, well, plus we can also suppress the fact that it's color Biao, that there's a homomorphic volume form. A model data and deformed B model data are examples of what's called generalized complex structure. So this notion introduced by Hitchin. So, um, so what is this? What is this thing? Well, um, it's called a generalized complex structure, which is called GC structure. Um, it's an endomorphism. Let's call it say I like on the manifold X. Say endomorphism from of this vector space, sum of tangent and cotangent bundles such that so, so squares to minus one, uh, second, well, um, on this uh, sum, there is a natural uh, Lorentzian metric, sort of pairing, symmetric pairing, I'm sure sort of a matrix form like this. Called Q, yeah. just evaluation of a vector on a covector, and symmetrize you're going to get a symmetric bilinear form. So, so this guy preserves it's orthogonal or pseudo orthogonal. So preserve this Euclidean form, and second, it's integrable in some sense. <coughs> so what does it mean? Well, there's some funny bracket on this sum of tangent tangent bundle. So, called current bracket. On sec sections of this, this bundle. So, Vector field plus a form. So it's uh, going to be lead derivative of the second entry minus like that. It's a funny non symmetric uh, bracket, uh, but it does satisfy kind of Leibniz rule. I won't write it down, but there's some version of Leibniz rule satisfies. And um, uh, the, it's, an, it's actually is skew-symmetric on isotropic uh, 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 subspaces of this uh, sort of with respect to Q. So um, anyway, so, uh, so this is definition and um, So example, why is it called generalized complex structure? So, so, so what does it mean integrable? It means that um, uh, if you look at the eigenvalue, just like for usual complex structure, if you look at, uh, complexify your sky, look at the eigenspace with the eigenvalue, say, plus i, then it's closed with respect to that bracket after you complexify the bracket. So um, uh, that actually makes this uh, sub-bundle into a Lie algebra. Uh, because on isotropic, even though it's not uh, skew-symmetric, this pairing of this bracket on general sections, but uh, it is uh, anti-symmetric on, on uh, isotropic subspaces, and because of this property, the I eigenspace is isotropic. So, um, example, of course, the complex. If you have a complex structure, <coughs> regarded as just a map from a tangent bundle to itself, 
and then you can just let So an obvious notation, consider this block diagonal uh, and endomorphism, and it's a generalized complex structure. So another one, if you have symplectic structure, Would you try yeah, okay. So. Oh, that's what you said, Jacobi. Oh, well, sort of Jacobi. Well, I'm afraid. Let me check. No. Yeah, it will be. It will be just the usual ones. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So there is some Jacobi here, by the way. We should write it out. Um, if I call it, if I call it, you know, the back of just just. Okay. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have called. Well, these brackets are just sort of anti-symmetric, but it's not. But anyway, the Jacobi looks like this. That's always true, but uh, okay. So because skew symmetry is not the same as the usual Jacobi, so, uh, okay, lack of skew symmetry. Okay. Anyway, so other examples are you have a symplectic manifold. You have a map like this, and which is non degenerate. So we just set. Consider this guy in its generalized complex structure, and so um, another well further example. If you have a say complex structure and a bivector uh, which is uh, of type two zero plus zero two, so that is homomorphic part plus it's, plus it's holomorphic, right? So, so holomorphic plus one bivector. Then you can set um, consider this upper triangular um, generalized complex structure. And it's also indeed generalized complex structure. You can check. So, um, so, so the, all this notion. Well, this notion was proposed by, by Hitchin and. Uh, Yeah. yeah, right. That's only differential condition, right? Yeah. Well, okay. So, so the condition in the form is closed, and the condition, the complex structure is integrable to the body. Yeah. 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 Right. So this up, the fact that p is of type two zero plus zero two is a consequence of this guy, yeah. while the differential condition just integrability. <laughs> so um. Okay. So, so p is a holomorphic. Also. Well, no, p is a here. Is a real bivector, but, but it's you know it's to zero part is holomorphic. It's zero two part is anti holomorphic. Ah. So, okay. so that's just okay. So um, in particular, it's a holomorphic Poisson structure. It's a holomorphic Poisson structure, really, because of course anti holomorphic no, that yeah. zero two part is just complex conjugate of right, two zero, right? right. Yeah. So um, now a further class of examples we can get in the, in the following way. Um, so there's something called um, B field again. There is a B, which is giving something different. B field transform. So the, the point is that the current bracket has a uh, automorphism. So um, um, if you have um, so let B be a closed two form on X, then you can consider. This kind of automorphism. If you think about B as a map from tangent to cotangent bundle, you can consider this kind of automorphism, and um, it preserves a current bracket. Therefore, you can just take any of these examples and conjugate by this matrix for arbitrary closed two form. You're still going to get a generalized complex structure. 
So. Um, so for example, if you consider, say, take this guy, oops. and then apply it with B field, this two some two form, you get some horrible looking guy. I think. Which is neither upper nor lower triangular. Okay. So um, anyway, so that's, that's enough examples for, for us. Anyway, the point is that um, um, this that turns out one can actually define um, a generalized sort of generalization of both A and B model, whose input is neither symplectic structure nor um, complex structure, but some generalized complex structure. So. Um, Uh, yeah, so basically, well, so you can look at infinitesimal deformations, for example, and ask what are the, uh, and it, they basically, deformations of a complex structure as a generalized complex structure, precisely the infinitesimal deformations of the category of direct category of coherent shifts on the color BL manifold. So, um, generalized complex structures will be deformations of the category. Yeah, so any, yeah, so you can just reinterpret uh, the, say, so the tangent space, is the space of deformations of the Calabial category is made of, say, uh, Poisson by vectors. Uh, there's a uh, H2 of O, and there are deformational complex structures themselves, you know, H1 of the tangent bundle. And they all you know, map to infinitesimal deformation of a complex structure as a generalized complex structure within the... But, but, but also, is it, is it true also without infinitesimal, just the deformations, one of the deformations are also the same? At the finite level, it's kind of difficult say, but the claim is this: that first of all, you can um, first of all independently attach a, you know, a generalized complex structure, or a two-dimensional topological field to any generalized complex structure with some Calabial condition, which I'm not going to formulate. No, sure, you can. Yeah, it probably has been worked. Yeah, you can easily work it out. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so from this you can extract some Lie algebroid for any general construction. You can write Mar Marcatan equation based on that Lie algebroid. So, and if you write it out for the example, exa if the starting point is a complex structure, then I guess it's the same, going to be the same equation. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that, yeah. Um, so, anyway, so one can attach a dimensional topological field theory to any Calabiao. Well, I don't know what's going to explain what Calabial means in the generalized context, but there is some condition there. And um, um, in particular, um, uh, there is a way to, uh, in particular, you can um, attach it to um, uh, to generalized complex structure of this form, of this upper triangular one. Okay. So, so in, in, in that, so this, well, completely, you can just write out the classical action for corresponding, corresponding field theory uh, and um, set up, you know, path integral uh, for this field theory. Of course, the, just like for complex structure, if you want to try to define the B model, you have to choose some additional data, like say, some metric which is compatible with the complex structure, and then, then you write down a concrete action. <coughs> Similarly, here you have to really add, add, change, uh, add some data, like generalized scalar structure, something like that. And uh, once you add it, then you can write down concrete action. Then you can show that actually the traditional data doesn't affect anything. Just like a, in the case of a B model, choosing a you know scalar form doesn't really change uh, the category of brains. Similarly, here choosing the generalized scalar structure doesn't change anything. Everything depends on, on, this, on this generalized complex structure. So what, what does it mean? 
Well, again, there is some no some similar in the path integral formulation. There is some constraint. Um, uh, there is a, should be a simple transition. Yeah, I mean, there's this Lie algebraid, uh, which I can define from generalized complex structures by, and then um, uh, it has grading. And if you look at the uh, top sort of degree uh, of this guy, it should be sort of, sort of there's some holomorphic section, of, no, generalized holomorphic section of that um, number vanishing of this sort of Lie algebraid. But is there a simple geometric definition? I don't know a simple geometric definition, but purely formally. What do you mean? Like the top exterior power of tangent one of this trivial. This is the definition for complex. Well, no, I, I cannot. There, there is some equ differential equation you can write down. No, 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 he doesn't want that. He just wants to write down something analogous to del bar of a, a top form is equal to zero, something like that, right? Yeah, you can write it down. Yeah, so there's some. some except that del bar looks horrible. It's some differential operator defined on, the, on this Lie, section of this Lie algebra. Right? So, um, okay. So, um, let's see, where am I? Um, so, this suggests that indeed this uh, generalized complex um, structure, uh, you know, that this topological field theory um, for a generalized complex uh, manifold is uh, uh, related somehow to it gives the same result. Its, its category of brains must be the same uh, as the uh, as the deformation of the category of B brains. And particularly, if you, if you choose this kind of generalized complex structure. It's kind of nebulous what means mirror symmetry here, because you just have to happen to happen to have two different generalized complex structures, uh, and the corresponding category is equivalent. <coughs> you could say it's a mirror symmetry, if you wish, but the point is that somehow, since now we treat symplectic and complex on the same footing, yeah, yeah. there's no distinction between like. Yeah, but the question is that there are kind of evolution which we expect on this data, which is the other kind. I, I mean, the yes, mirror yes, symmetry yes. changes the underlying manifold. So no, I'm just saying, suppose we have two different manifolds with two different generalized complex structures. Yeah, the question is whether it affects kind of evolution. Uh, no, I don't think, since here, sort of lost notion of who is. A and who is B, there's no real distinction, but you just have, might have different comp general complex structure, but the same category of brains. Different general complex manifold, but the same category of brains. That happens. That happens, yeah. Uh, but since, don't know, no, some, since A and B are now on the same footing, there's no like, way to say anything more than that. So anyway, so this suggests that if you take a generalized complex manifold with this kind of generalized complex structure and construct the corresponding um, um, topological filter, you're going to get some uh, its category of brains is uh, can be described as category of brains of non commutative deformation of the that space the complex structure i so now interestingly so this um one can make it more concrete by looking at um this very concrete uh, situation which we sort of do understand I mean, start with an a model which you sort of do understand and apply b field transform that is it's an a model with a b field and ask okay can it be like can it can this generalized complex structure be like that? And of course it can because you just need to make sure that this corner vanishes. In particular, if um, um, B, which is this two form, close two form, is such that. Um, Omega inverse B squared is minus one, so that's endomorphism of tangent bundle, which squares to minus one. Uh, then, um, then <laughs> expect a model with a B field to be equivalent in sense of categories. Brain is the same to. Um, um, deformation to 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 category coherent trees on the deformation. Uh, I don't call it, called x prime. Say. So the sort of deformation of x uh, with this Poisson by vector. Yes. Yeah, so this is the condition that this matrix is uh, upper triangle. Yes. Right? Yeah. So um, okay, that's a uh, suggestion. So we can now try to make it concrete, and actually try to see. 
why is it when you look at the A model with uh, some B field, if you wish, uh, then why does non-commutative de deformation, first of all, why does the complex structure of some sort appears? And second, why, why is that, uh, why non-commutative deformation of the uh, corresponding uh, space of homomorphic functions appears? Okay. One of the angles B is a complex structure, right? Okay, so let me just say it, yeah. I'll actually, this one, the next one I want to say is that, um, is, is yes. So, um, first of all, it follows basically from this, um, I said before, that it has to be that this, I mean, upper triangular general complex structures are, always have complex structure up here and a holomorphic and a Poisson bivector here, which is of, of the right type. So it must be that, the ra that, that this ratio is a complex structure. Not entirely obvious, but you need to have, uh, the ratio, this is saying that the ratio of two close two forms is an almost complex structure and can show that it's integrable automatically. So um, that's true. So let's call it, say, I. Yes, so um, it's de deformation. Non commutative deformation. Non commutative deformation. Maybe we should call it. Non commutative because there will also be a Poisson break. Yeah, so. By the way, is this a Fancevich deformation? Yes. So. Um, now this is, of course, not a general case. So in particular, this Poisson bivector here is simply minus omega inverse is non-degenerate. So, so the Poisson, uh, the Kansevich deformation defined by Poisson sigma model? Is it, uh, well, here's more concrete. It's not Poisson, really. It's a sim symplectic ver case of the Poisson by because automatically. No, no, I'm asking about the previous case. Uh, yeah, so. general P. Yeah, for general P, it would be it's, you get some sigma model, which once you quantize, you're going to get a, a category of brains which corresponds to Kantsevich's. It's a, it's a bit different sigma model, by the way. The physical approach to this gives you somewhat different sigma model. But the start product you get is, is it the one that Kantsevich yeah. would get right. Poisson sigma model? Yes. Uh -huh. I think actually the Poisson sigma model can be massaged into this more physical one, which depends on some additional data like this generalized uh -huh. scalar structure. Because, but uh, so Poisson sigma model is simpler than what, it, what what's happening here. Uh -huh. You can write it down without choosing any, anything in addition. So uh, anyway, so, uh, so the point is that uh, this is a special case. In this case, Poisson structure is not degenerate. Um, and moreover, uh, so So omega is a 2, 0 form with this, uh, plus 0, 2 form with respect to this new complex structure. So I want to say the following. So first of all, from this is a special case because first we have a, a non-general Poisson by vector, and second, it's a, so you get complex manifold. But in addition, you can check that B plus I omega is a holomorphic symplectic structure. Uh -huh. Right. So yeah. So um, so really. Uh, we can we really get a good uh, well, a reasonably simple uh, understanding of this non, this category of brain non commutative deformation of some complex manifold, not in general, but when it's a complex symplectic manifold. So in that case, we can just uh, say that it's uh, you just need to study a model with some particular B field, which is the real part of a symplectic form, and the a model with a symplectic structure, which is the imaginary part of that simpl complex symplectic form. So, okay, cool, capital omega. Okay, so um, so how do we see that some commutative deformation of the algebra of functions occurs? Um, well, uh, the key is. Um, No, that, that, that's it. There's no other. Well, there's a complex symplectic manifold. It's equivalent to having homomorphic symplectic structure, right? This, yeah, this same. right. Yeah, so this, uh -huh. so this special case, so you have homomorphic symplectic manifold, then you can attach to it uh, this kind of generalized complex structure, mm -hmm. although P is not going to be very general, just non degenerate always. And then you know that, therefore, that the A model somehow should give you non commutative deformation 
of the complex manifold, that complex structure. So how to actually see that? So that was actually appeared uh, um, uh, in my paper from 2005, uh, but later was um, used in this long paper on geometric Langlands. It was a key, key uh, uh, ingredient. And um, the point is that, um, okay. so first of all, how do we can get non commutative algebras in general? So in, in this setting. So the in any topological field, you have an algebra attached to a circle, and that's always commutative, simply because this bordism always looks, there's no order here. So, but, uh, so it gives commutative algebra always. To get some non-commutative, you need to look at this kind of algebra. So pick some particular brain, it's called alpha. And look at uh, its uh, spec space attached to an interval uh, uh, or with the same boundary conditions. We call this. So this gives you a map from uh, like this. And uh, the fact that it's compat compatibility with gluing ensures that it's associative multipl multiplication. But there's no reason for it to be commutative. So. So the claim is that in this A model with the B field, whatever there is, there is this particular brain uh, whose algebra of endomorphism is just it is basically deformation quantization of your. Um, uh, just particular alpha. Okay. Just a, yeah. So, in particular, by the way, if you want to interested in modules over this algebra, you can pick some other brain beta and then home from alpha to beta. We're going to mathematically module over this algebra, so we're going to use it later. So, so you said that it was an ANC integrated category. So, is, is it, does it do zero differential? Or? Oh well, this is uh, we just look. I'm just focusing sort of on this is in principle a graded space, but if you uh, it turns out that the zero component of this degree zero component of the space uh, is simply the non-commutative deformation of the algebra of homomorphic functions on the manifold. Ah, uh, so this is associative only in degree zero, or? No, it's associative. It's already homology of something. It's a. Uh, it's our home. Ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah. These are homes in the derived category. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um. And um, okay. So I need to then I'll turn to some information about what sort of what, what brains look like in this uh, category in the A model. First, without B field. So, without B field, it's more familiar. Everyone says that you get Foucault category of uh, X omega. So, that's the category, supposedly, but that's actually um, not quite precise in the sense that uh, if you look at geometric sort of brains, this is just examples. Objects here are just examples of brains, and if purely geometric, you can start other examples. Um, it's okay, but then there are also some called quasitropic brains. So here, objects are roughly speaking Lagrangian submanifold, real Lagrangian submanifold, submanifolds of X with some flat vector bundles. But here, you can, there are most, more general situations, uh, namely when you have, um, so what quasitropic means? Well, you have some submanifold, say Y in X, also with a vector bundle, but for simplicity, consider the case when it's just a line bundle. So and then the conditions, conditions on X is as follows. So, Y is defined So I have uh, some symplectic manifold X. And Y contains X or Y? Y is sub embedded in X. Ah, embedded. Yeah, so this, yeah, so, yeah. so like, kazotropic is a different generalization of um, yeah. uh, Lagrangian is when you had, when defined by yeah. as a zero set of some functions. But those functions form actually a Poisson ideal. That is, the Poisson bracket also vanishes in some manifold. So, um, but that's not all. So, uh, whenever you have this, you have um, also um, um, a foliation. Uh, yeah, zero foliation rate. Uh, and then, um, uh, and the dimension of leaves is equal to the co-dimension of this guy in X. So, and then 
you want your, uh, your, your line bundle to, to appear really, a line bundle on Y. Uh, and LY with a connection. And connection, well, and this connection is flat along the leaves. So in the case of Lagrangian sub manifold, uh, leaf has the same dimension of the manifold itself, it just means everything is flat. But in general, there's also directions which are not along the leaves, but transverse. So, well, and there's a th further condition here, namely that um, the curvature of this guy uh, it defines a symplectic, sorry, uh, defines a complex symplectic form. So it satisfies, sorry. So, so let, okay, let's, 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 let um, this, uh, this be the curvature, then F plus I omega defines a complex uh, symplectic form. F inverse omega is going to be, uh, F omega is a complex structure. Yes, so, so in the transverse direction of the foliation, yeah. uh, this guy is supposed to be in F supposed to be degenerate, and moreover, the ratio, well, by definition, omega is also in the, in the transverse direction, and the ratio will be complex structure. Yeah. <coughs> when you say and transverse, you mean on the space of leaves. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's actually the most important example. So for us, so so so, so example, but most important one. If y is equal to x, then f. The condition is just this one. So so if you have such a uh, line bundle with such curve, such connection whose curvature. Satisfies this, and you got yourself uh, what's called chasotropic A brain, or rank one. Um, now, in the case of with a B field, so basically all that happens is you need to. So adding B field is very easy. Let's replace F everywhere by F plus B. So, um, in particular, suppose your F, suppose your F just vanishes, but B satisfies this. So you're going to get then uh, a quasitropic brain of maximal well, dimension in our situation. So you get sort of a, um, get yourself a quasitropic brain supported on the whole X. So, so, so the, in this case, the brains will be objects of this category, right? And they will be finally generated modules of this quantization? Uh, there will be some modules over this quantization. But one can compute, indeed, the module structure. But let me just say that you get a brain, so you can attach to it now. You can ask, okay, what is its algebra of endomorphisms? And you can see that even though we started with symplectic manifold, now a complex structure appeared, simply from the brain itself. Yeah. And you can check that, first of all, the, if you look at morphisms, and the morphism of this brain, in the category of brain, brains, A brains, then it's, it's a graded space, but it's zero component, simply the space of holomorphic functions in this, uh, in this complex structure. And the algebra structure is non-commutative and given by the Poisson, uh, by this uh, quantization of this guy, of the X, with, with this symplectic structure, with the, this. okay. So oh. there will be modules that are obtained by quantizing Poisson ID. Right, okay, so, so for example, if you look at Lagrangian guys, uh, then you expect to get uh, Lagrangian A brains, objects from here. Uh, then you expect to get uh, modules over that algebra. Of, I can say, wait a second, that's something that seems wrong because here objects are um, uh, submanifold just Lagrangian with respect to omega. In particular, they're real, not, not complex. But that's because here I assume B is zero, right? In general, there's some generalization of this. And generalization says that your submanifolds, which are allowed, are Lagrangian both with respect to omega and B. Or rather, B should restrict to zero so in the brain. Right. In the case when B is like this, 
when it's non-degenerate, it's you have a ratio like that uh, being uh, the fact that omega and you both restrict to zero means that there's actually complex submanifolds, the complex Lagrangian submanifolds. So that's reasonable because modules of a non-commutative deformation with a non-degenerate Poisson bracket should be supported on complex Lagrangian submanifolds. Should be sh yes. So, um, right. So, like, this like, object of this category become homomic modules over this deformation quantization. Okay, so, um, okay, so uh, this is a two-dimensional story. Uh, and uh, what I want to explain in the next lecture, I'm going to stop here, is the, uh, so this, this has various specialization to the case when X uh, emerges from some, some gauge theory in four dimensions or three dimensions. And then these considerations will predict that certain uh, interesting um, algebras, which come from higher dimensional field theory, get deformed basically by this mechanism. So. Okay, so it's